Hey guys, it's Lee from Duck and Wild Magazine. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Tiger Floria. Porsche 973, last victory. In 1973, Porsche won the last Tiger Floria in Sicily that counted towards the World Championship with a 911 Carrera RSR. This is where Porsche won its first major car race back in 1956. The Tiger Florio in Sicily gave Porsche its first victory in a World Championship race. Umberto Maglioli triumphed in sweltering heat in 1956 with a Porsche 550A Spider. The history of Tiger Florio came to an end in 1973. The Tiger Florio in Sicily gave Porsche its first victory. When the road race was deemed no longer appropriate for the times and lost its world championship status. At the final Tiger Florio race, Porsche was not the favourite to take victory. The two 911 Carrera RSR cars with an output of 232 kilowatts, which is 315 horsepower, were significantly slower than the much stronger prototype of Ferrari at Alfa Romeo. The situation brought to mind the very early years when Porsche took on the role of David, relying on the Goliaths to make mistakes, and history repeated itself. Now let's talk about Tiger Florio. For many years, a round of the World Sports Car Championship. And guys, just quickly, if you like this content, give us a like, smash the subscribe button, and you'll grab our videos as they come through. Tiger Florio, consisting of 11 laps around a 45 mile course on public mountain roads on the island of Sicily. Along with the Mili Miglia and the Carrera Panamerica, the Tiger Florio was considered one of the ultimate endurance road races. But as with the others, it was discontinued due to the inherent risks. After 67 years, 18 of which a round of the World Sports Car Championship, 973 was going to be its last time round as a FIA sanctioned event. From mid 1950s, Tiger Florio was a two horse race between Porsche and Ferrari. Ferrari drivers were in the Ferrari 312 PB, weighing 245 kilograms lighter and carrying an extra 130 horsepower. So on paper, the Ferraris and Alphas should have waxed the floor with Porsche and their road car based RSRs, but that wasn't the case. The curving 45 mile lap with nearly a thousand corners, depending on how you count them, rewarded the deft handling and durability more than outright speed. And although people don't account that the RSRs were in contention from the start, and as the timesheets show, they could have won even if the two Ferraris and Alphas stayed in the race and didn't retire. Porsche's win was long celebrated, and rightly so. They were competing with cars a class above the RSR, and to win on the very last Tiger Florio wrote the Porsche name in legend.
The fast cars came off the track, allowing Van Lennep and Mueller to dominate the race and claim victory in their reliable 911 Carrera RSR. Finishing in sixth place was a Porsche 911, with Baron Antonio Pucci and Stekonik from Weissach at the wheel. The victory of the 911 RSR was thanks in part to a stroke of luck, as demonstrated by a very timely wheel change when a mechanic happened to sit on the still warm tyre in the pit a short time later. It had already lost its air. Porsche won the Tiger Florio 11 times between 1956 and 1973. In 1986, Porsche once again poured energy, great energy into the race, breathing life back into the Tiger Florio. By that time, a historic rally with short special stages on mountain route. The main through roads were already subdued due to high speed, and it was only possible to hit the throttle fully before and after. Brian Redman did this especially well, together with Hans Hermann. He took victory in a Porsche 908 03. Thanks for joining us for a brief history on Tiger Florio in 973. Thanks for watching, thanks for being here. We'll see you later. Essere un difensore dell'automobilismo ha detto che la Targa Florio è come un viaggio in fuori bordo quando il mare è in tempesta, perché se voi fate questa targa vi accorgete che siete sbalzati come il mare in tempesta.